Unrest in the Dakotas. Dispatch equal numbers of giant battle robots to all sides. Whoever survives, claim we backed them all along. Illegal immigration. Let the new guys pilot the giant battle robots. Criticism that your domestic policy is too giant battle robot based. They can take it up with my new press secretary, the Mametron 9000. If that's the guys from Air Force One, tell them they get the keys back once they say the magic word. Quiet, Max. It's the commissioner. Total collapse of the economy and downfall of Western civilization? Great grinning head of John the Baptist and a pork pie hat stuffed in a rhinestone bowling bag. We're on our way. We've got a computer crisis to take care of, little buddy. Have they tried turning it off and back on again? Bigger than that, Max. Computers everywhere are going haywire. Planes are falling from the sky. Nuclear reactors are nearing meltdown. And scores of pasty white nerds will be forced to go outdoors and socialize with normal people. The horror. Where do we start, Sam? The National Consortium of Smart People who are good with computers has been tracking electron surges all over the country. And one of the biggest is right here in our neighborhood. What an unbelievably convenient coincidence. How do we find an electron surge? No idea. Let's go. Right, let's check the messaging machine first. Hello, Mr. President. This is Margie, your scheduling assistant with some changes for this week. You still have impeachment hearings on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, but the one on Wednesday has been pushed back for your war crimes trial. Thanks. <laughs> Hello again, Mr. President. Just a reminder that you're still scheduled to visit middle schools this week to remind kids of the importance of staying in school. As usual, we'll have therapists on hand after your speech to talk with the more traumatized children. Yeah, I mean, if they if they put the music up on Amazon, iTunes, anything, they don't even have to put it on, on a, a hard disk. They would make money. It's a good... Just give Jared Emerson Johnson... I think that's his name. Just give him the right to put up the stuff, or or just I don't know. The music is too good to to ignore. One more thing, Mr. President. Your opponents have finally decided to cancel their weekly election ballot recounts. According to your calendar, that should free up the hour and a half each week you have marked as time to gloat. <laughs> Our background. Yeah, we're back around. Okay. Let's go look in the closet. What's new in the closet? Oh! Even if he was just a puppet, Max, don't you think it's unsettling to keep the head of the former president inside our closet? You're right, Sam. We need to get a pike. That's true. There are ways to get it. Wait, no, never mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he probably got told by Telltale to take it down, because I'm fairly sure Telltale still owns the rights, I would think. I don't know. It's it's a tricky business, and I don't know enough to, to really state anything. Um, Let's go visit Sybil first. That's going to be the right thing to do, is visit Sybil first. Beta testing? Ooh. Hey, Sybil, have you... I'm surrounded! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Stand back, Max. It sounds like Sybil's finally cracked. It's about time. Her relative stability was making the rest of the neighborhood look bad. Back, pit demons! With Sword of Righteous Fire, I cast thee away! This is just like that time we were hired as motivational speakers for that Sunday school. Actually, now that I look closely, it's more like our last case. And the three before that. If there's one thing I've learned to recognize recently, it's a hypnotic device. And those weird glasses are it. Launch stinging BBs of unholy smiting. To break her out of the trance, we'll have to deliver a blow to her head. You know, Sam, when you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. Lol. Okay. Um. We can't go straight for her. I don't remember what we have to do to get her to, uh... To, uh... Stop doing this, because I know that if we try the boxing glove, it doesn't work. Demons, cast ward of pungent unsavoriness. I can't get close enough to touch her, Max. 
So that's not obviously not it. So. Hmm. Let's head out and come back to this one. Oh. Uh oh. Well, they canceled the Liver and Onions concert. And after only five months of trying to sell a ticket. Poor Liver and Onion. That must be a blow to their popularity. Um, let's see. What's in the gumball machine today? This gumball machine looks pretty banged up. A gang of about five dentists came through the other night, and four of them just started beating the hell out of it. What did the fifth one do? He kept sobbing and saying, why can't we all just get along? <clears throat> oh man. Boost the auto of the game? Yeah, sure. I can uh, do that. Uh, let me do that real quick. Um, and let's go into this setting and change that to, to 125. Right. How's this? Better audio? Or does it need to be higher? But yeah, the voice actor for Sybil was in Deadly Premonition. Also, the voice actor for uh, for Abraham Lincoln is also the voice actor who plays Mojo Jojo in the Powerpuff Girls and is also a character in Deadly Premonition. Newspaper? Oh, oops. We'll, we'll go and do the newspaper headlines after this. All right, cool. Nothing started. Let's go look. Let's go look at the the newspaper headlines. Newspaper offices coffee machine empty for a third straight day. That's some hard hitting local reporting. I guess the reporters are having a tough time adjusting to life without the internet. Lincoln Rampage ends with colorful mushroom cloud. There's one way to put a positive spin on it. Majority of DC areas still uninhabitable. At least some things never change. Pog Champ, yeah. Voice actors, they can do more than one role. Oh man. No, but it's pretty cool. President Max adopts alien baby with unidentified life partner. We should sue. For printing unsubstantiated libel? For giving me second billing. Ha. Uh -huh. Ha uh ha. -huh. Newspaper offices, coffee machine, empty. Oh, nope. we went. We went around. Right. Let's go back into Bosco's. Is the uh, audio quality better now? Or not quality? The uh, volume. Prune nut. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was thinking about something else. Look at those poor little pockets of air, desperately trying to escape certain decaffeinated doom. <laughs> Sludgies. Awesome. This week's Good flavors, to know. potion of giant strength and elixir of dwarven flatulence. False advertising! I've drunk a gallon of the red potion and I still don't have giant strength. Actually, the giant strength is the green one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dwarf flatulence, okay. Get your red-hot hotness right inside. I'm not sure which is more terrifying, the cheese on the nachos or the free toilet brush that comes with them. Probably the toilet brush. All right, um, let's talk to Jimmy. Well, if it isn't our favorite ethically challenged rat, Jimmy Two Teeth. Sam was wondering where you'd scampered off to. I'm touched. I was wondering what embarrassing pose we'd use when we had you stuffed and mounted. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared out of my wits. You's gonna buy something or what? Uh, what's for sale? What's a two-bit crook like you trying to sell this time? I'll ignore that petty insult for the sake of a successful transaction. I'm selling the latest in interpersonal defense. You're an arms dealer? You make it sound so cheap. I deal in peace of mind. What have you got in stock? Yeah, right now I only got this cannon. You guys look like you should just start out with handguns. 
We've already got handguns. Oh, yeah? Where? Just trust him on that one. How much for that cannon? It's not for sale. Worst arms dealer ever. It's not for sale to you guys. I don't sell to the police. Call it my own ethical code. But we're just barely police. Yeah, I seen how you guys work. I sell it to you, and next thing I know, the bunny's got it pointed right at me. Freelance police, Mr. Teeth. You're under arrest. Come along quietly, and we'll only use excessive force instead of medieval. Just try it, pigs. Last time I checked, it was a free country. I'm working on that. <laughs> See you later, Jimmy. Maybe if you can find me. Oh, don't worry, Jimmy. We're just going to take the cannon from you. Hey, hands off the merchandise, pigs. Ooh. Right. That's it, Jimmy. The last time you do that. Oh, he did it again. Right, Jimmy. That's the last time you do that to me. I'm stuck! As president, I resolve to address the nation's rat obesity problem without delay. Let me out of here! Oh, we'll let you out of there soon enough, Jimmy. Soon enough. Oh, man. Hey, Bosco. Greetings and well met! Friend watchman for hire! Sam, how come I suddenly have a primal desire to beat Bosco savagely? Because he's talking like a Renaissance Fair attendee, Max. It's an innate fight or flight response. I am El Bosco Drill, the unhinged, mighty half elf ranger! <laughs> okay, oh. Bosco. While Max prepares the Thorazine, why don't you tell us why you've become an elf? Half elf! And I'll tell you why. I've had multiple delivery conspiracies, I've had missiles aimed at me, and now I got rival arms dealers setting up shop in my store. Point being? It's not safe for me here anymore. I gotta take my business the only place I can feel 100% secure. The internet. Because the internet is so safe. What does this internet do that <laughs> you have to do with being an elf? Half elf! It's because everyone on the internet has to pick an avatar. Like a dwarf or an orc or a hot young 15 year old girl curious about the adult world and willing to experiment. I didn't think it was possible, but he's actually less creepy as the elf. Half elf, fool! I never mind. You guys don't understand how computers work. But I'm a computer science major. You're taking your store online? Where will that leave us? We fear and mistrust computers. Don't worry, guys. My online store will offer twice the inconvenience at thrice the price. Well, see you there. Very nice. Very nice deal. We want to buy something. I have the finest goods in all the land. Tell him we'll pay him just to stop talking like that. What would Squire care to purchase? Do you have any dual-core processors with 512 megabyte cash? Nay. Do you have any chimpanzee-sized diapers? Nay. Do you have any barbecue plankton chips? Nay. Do you have any keychains with a plus eight modifier to dexterity? I wish. Do you have any self-respect? Nay. Ha <laughs> ha, tricked you. No, I understood the question. I understood it all too well. Oh. You sure do know how to suck the fun out of everything, Bosco. Poor Bosco. Do you have any Lombos? He's stale! Do you have any... Do oh, we're back around. Okay, what have you got? What have you got? Oh, not much. Just a virulent biological weapon. All right! Biological weapons? We don't like to judge. Speak for yourself, Sam! But isn't germ warfare a little on the south side of ethical? I've got to compete to stay in the market, guys. If an arms dealer is going to open up shop in my store, I've got to up the ante. Okay, how much? All right. How much for this virulent biological weapon of yours? One billion dollars. We'll take it. What's another billion or so to the national deficit? I'm sorry. For safety reasons, I no longer accept cash in the store. You'll have to pay online. That's pretty inconvenient. Tyranny. Thank you.